Good morning, good morning. I'm back with your favorite uncle. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna try to diagnose what's going on with this ice tank. This ice tank has been a thorn on my side for a very long time. So what's happening is under regular cruise conditions, everything's fine. The moment I launch the car, or stop suddenly, this pump loses prime. So I'm like, all right, that's enough of that crap. So I'm looking at the inlet, I'm looking at the 90, I'm looking at a whole bunch of stuff to try to figure out, this is the return line. This is the suction, then the feed goes under the car, goes up, intercooler stuff happens, heat exchanger stuff happens, then it returns here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain it, and I'm gonna see if I can make a pickup that instead of picking up off the side of the tank, because think about it, if you decel, or if there's any reason that this thing doesn't see a good amount of head pressure, well, it can lose prime. And it's been doing it more and more. And since I recently installed the Whipple back on the car, I thought, okay, you can't mess around. This thing can get pretty hot. It's just a big honker of a blower. It's got a bigger, I'm sorry, smaller pulley. So it's pulley for like 30 PSI, but I'm going to bring it down. I have more pulleys that Bondo Bird gave me. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain this guy and see what the pickup looks like. And we'll see if I can plumb in or pipe in a tube that basically theoretically goes across at a downward angle, perforated, and have that be the pickup as opposed to this side thing on the wall. So let me get to draining it. I'll show you what it looks like. Oof, that looks like shit. Oh yeah, so. Hmm, that's gonna be interesting. So the pickup is on the higher side and hmm, I'm gonna have to make some kind of a coupler or something that is like, yeah, you know, like a little silicone coupler or something because I don't think I can thread anything into that. So threading something into that is not gonna happen because basically what I wanna do is make a pipe that, ew, ew a pipe that um, I'm gonna drain all this water get it all cleaned up I have to make a pipe that kind of picks it up from down there now I was hoping there was another pickup here or something but there isn't which is a bummer I'm gonna be honest Tick Vision I wish the pickup was a lot lower this pickup is in my opinion kind of high and if there's a lot of D cell it can be an issue and you have to run like a shitload of water for it to never lose prime and sometimes that's just not ideal so all right let me uh let me get it drained see what it looks like okay oh that's a good idea if you actually had it on the actual drain pan asshole so this is probably 10 gallons or more so I'll have to drain it multiple times into this bucket and get it all out of there, at least until we can see the pickup. Okay, so that's getting close to the end, so that's good. I might, uh, I might suck it all out. Hey, yo. Um, yeah, I might, I might want to get it all out of there and dry it up and then just kind of run a rag to the thing. But yeah, you see what I mean? Like, the pickup is big. And it is technically at the bottom of the tank, but why does it lose prime so easily? You know what I mean? Like, the more I look at it, the the, the pretty proper that looks, but I might have to put a coupler and extend that out so that it picks up from more of the center as opposed to the side and be prone to sloshing. I'm here thinking that big oval is the inlet, but a closer look, <laughs> look at this little tiny half inch situation, which technically shouldn't lose prime like at all, but I can't even thread anything in there. So technically this sucker should not be losing prime. The, the This thing being that low, you know what I mean? Unless that's clogged up. So I'm gonna loosen up all the fittings, but you know, I looked at it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's a huge inlet. Look at that thing. And then you, <laughs> you go, Oh, okay, that's tiny, so whatever. Okay, we got some pretty heavy sediment here, and it's concerning because it's an impeller, so it's a centrifugal style pump, so basically it looks like a turbo. 
So I want to make sure, see that sediment? That can eat away at the impeller. And if the impeller is made out of a not so great material, even stainless will wear down over time. So I want to see if the sediment that was in the tank is causing issues. So let me take this, it's called it the volute. Let me take the volute off, see what the impeller looks like. Okay, first things first, these screws feel terrible. Like, it feels like the thread is galled. So I'm hoping that they did not put any kind of thread sealant or some kind of, you know, any kind of sealant on there because if it's like stainless on stainless, and the threads are probably jacked up. Okay, so the guys at Lund ever wondered what one of these pumps looks like. So this is the volute, just like a turbo volute. But obviously the water gets sucked into there. And this is what they call a closed style impeller. It does not scoop water. It flings water. As you can see, the, the, the blades are angled a certain way. So it sucks water in, flings water out, rotates only one way because the blades are basically doing this to the water. That it's going... It's flinging the water out, so suction, discharge, centrifugal force this way, and out the, this is the inlet, this is the out, so I didn't see any issues with the pump, so the pump's not the issue. So Jake calls me. I took the pump apart, everything looks good, reinstalling it now. Jake calls me and goes, hey, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, you, you mentioned the tank. You know, maybe we could do something with the inlet, maybe we could do that. So we were running a bunch of scenarios, and then he said, hey, does it have a vent? And I go, I don't think so. Then I come over here and I said, actually, it does have a vent. So I took the vent out and it's plugged solid. Come on, zoom in. Let me see if I can get this camera. Samsung cameras are usually pretty good. So the vent is totally plugged up. So maybe this is the reason it kept losing prime. Look at that. Remember, this car sat outside for a bit. The previous owner just kind of neglected it, and I got my hands on it, and it was never right. So maybe the whole time, this vent being plugged up was causing the pump to lose prime. So let's clean it up, do some testing, see if it, if it fixes it. And the way to know is slam the brake, and you'll know right away if it loses prime or not. Okay, so I couldn't clean that brass situation, so I just drilled two holes in it, two tiny little holes because it's i just want to test it and if it works out i can replace it with something that has maybe a one-way check valve or literally just a hose flipped upside down so water doesn't slosh all over the place but it's a good little test so we'll see if the fact that this was creating a vacuum when this was plugged up because of the corrosion was causing the pump to lose prime. Don't worry guys, I'll get it cleaned up after I get it all situated, but I've been sloshing water around all day. So let me fill it up with water, get the car running, get the pump primed up, take it for a drive, slam the brakes a bunch of times and see if I hear the lose the, the, the pump lose prime. I'm trying to get the pump to prime, but I wanted to have you guys hear it, see how pretty nasty this thing is. Trying to get it to prime. There it is. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so let's take it for a drive. Let's see if the IETs get a little stupid. Just need to turn it on and off again. Two holes drilled up here to relieve any suction because this was plugged before. Let's see if that fixes the issue. Obviously IAT2, the bottom number. So what you want to look at the top number is the cold air temp, bottom number. Oh, I'm hearing the pump kind of do something weird. So I'm going to go up here and slam the brake. I need a revision! I need a revision! My fans need to turn on sooner! I'm like, the world 
making weird sounds when I slam the brake. I gotta slam second. <laughs> and as I'm moving, things are good. Interesting. I don't know if this car stays running good and I fix a bunch of stuff. I might not need a house for a while. Okay, so we're back at the house, apartment, because I'm, you know, broke or whatever. So we're going to look at the data log, uh, third gear, fourth gear, uh, watts till about 5,000 RPMs each. They're right here. As you can see, wide open. If you know how to read logs, and I've shown you how to read logs, this is the throttle angle. stays nice and open. 81 degrees. Uh, RPMs go up to about 5,700 in third and 5,000 in fourth boost which is analog here analog psi goes up to 29.3 pounds of boost this whipple 4.5 is making all the steam short-term fuel trims are happy afr is happy it goes spikes up in between the shifts because it doesn't matter and timing is capped at knock sensors are happy see knock sensors just negative didn't do anything they just chilled out and they didn't really bother that much and uh Spark, which is S-A-F-T-O-T -T on this log, they're flat at 15 degrees capped. I probably have four more degrees to go, but I'm gonna leave it alone because it's blazing the tire on the street as is. But the most important one out of all is IAT2. Lower temps never got over 118 on the third gear hit. 
and then over 122 on the fourth gear hit and then at the end of the log then they, they they got up to 130 but then they started to recover see how it goes down once the car started moving some more and got down to 124 by the end of the pull so at most they saw 130 and at least they got down to 124 at the end of the pull because the pulls are right here see these two are the pulls bam and that's the IET it goes up up one decel it recovers and then it starts to go down again so everything is working exactly as it should and i'm ecstatic about that so thank you for hanging in there for watching me diagnose the tank setup and needed just a vent the vent the the, the pump was losing prime because there was no vent it was plugged up i drilled a couple of holes just to see if that would fix it, it seems to have fixed the issue Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. I appreciate you very much watching me diagnose this tank setup. I'll try to get you dyno and track and some street stuff with the GT500 as soon as I can. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.